Before we get into today's stories, check out DreadsArmy.com, where I release strange and weird news every single day. Now let's get to the stories. I was working as a park ranger in Green Mountain National Forest in Vermont. It was one of my childhood dreams to live in the forest and protect nature. I was a pretty idealistic kid. When I was little, I used to love the Smokey the Bear commercials on TV. They were my favorite, and he was my hero for some reason. So I was living my dream. I really loved it all. I spent a lot of my time just patrolling the trails and making sure everything was in good order. And there was a surprising amount of search and rescue missions too. I was amazed at how unprepared some people were when they decided to spend time in the woods. I did plenty of brush clearing and removing of fallen trees. That's how I ended up in this situation. I was almost done with my patrol one evening when I spotted a tree that seemed to be halfway sawn through. Whoever had been camping there apparently thought it was okay to cut down whole trees. I couldn't believe it. And how they chose to cut that one was just beyond me. I was in a really awkward place on the side of a hill with a ton of brush under it. It looked really precarious, like it could fall at any time. I was walking back to the ATV to get my chainsaw. Then across the road through the trees, I saw what looked like to be large saplings stacked together in kind of a teepee shape. There were two of those structures that I could see through the woods, and it was just really irritating me to think that these campers felt free to take down those young trees. I got my chainsaw out of the ATV and went back to do my cutting. When I got back to the tree, I had seen that it wasn't a saw that had been used. It looked like something had pushed it until it started to splinter, which didn't seem possible unless you used a heavy-duty truck or something but a truck couldn't reach that spot. I was ready to take it down when I heard this tree limb snap. Before I could even turn around, I was pinned under this huge branch. It landed across my thighs and one of my arms. I was pinned down there with the rest of the tree, threatening to fall any minute. It was unfrickin' believable. I was so grateful that I was able to reach my radio and call for help. I was trapped, but I wasn't in terrible pain. I could wiggle my fingers and I didn't feel like anything was broken. I had grazed my head on the way down, so I was bleeding. I felt like a real fool for getting myself in that position. It was starting to get dark and I was getting really uncomfortable. I lay there for close to an hour before the rescue truck got to me. It wasn't hard for two people to get the branch off of me. I was able to move everything fine and I didn't feel too bad considering. I felt okay to walk even though I was pretty stiff and limping a little. It was protocol that I be taken in for observation, though. There was no major hospital close by, but there was this old rural clinic in the area, so that's where they took me. It was dark by then, but I remember the moon was almost full because everything was still pretty visible. When we got there, the place looked more like an old house than anything. We were surprised to see this big military truck parked out in front. You know the kind that you see in a convoy on the highway? There were soldiers doing something in the back. We went up a ramp to the entrance, but we were confronted by a guard in a combat uniform holding some kind of rifle. He told us there was no access through here. We explained my situation, but he said we would have to go to one of the other outbuildings, and he would let someone know that we were there. We turned around to go back down the ramp. Then there was a bunch of shouting coming from the soldiers by the truck. They're shouting, clamp it down tighter, don't let it go. And they're obviously struggling with something inside of the truck. And then I heard the loudest, wildest yelp coming from the back of the truck. Primal, like a primal kind of scream. I limped down to the end of the ramp and was hit by this really horrible stench. The yelping went on and on. I just felt heartsick for whatever it was, but also terrified. Me and the guys with me just stood there. We felt paralyzed by this bizarre situation. Then the front door of the clinic burst open and someone in a white coat comes flying down the ramp holding something in one hand. The guard at the door yelled at us to get out of there and to go to the other building. We were heading away, but we kept looking behind us, and the white coat guy was being helped up to reach into the truck, and then a couple of minutes, everything got really quiet. We reached the door of the outbuilding and just stood there watching. They were letting down the tailgate, and then all of them pulled out what looked like a giant stretcher, Something huge was underneath that sheet. But when they were jostling it down, something like a big hairy foot got uncovered. I couldn't tell the color, but it was huge and very hairy. 
The toes almost looked human. The guard opened the entrance door, and they carried it inside. That's all I know. There's nothing about that night that I can explain. In the 90s, I lived in a rental house in a kind of a questionable area. I was recently divorced, and it was the only place I could afford for me and the kids. But still, I really liked the place, so I was disappointed when I got an unexpected letter from the landlord. The place was up for sale, and I only had a month to get out. I had no idea I was going to find an affordable place that quick. I got obsessed with looking at real estate ads and driving around neighborhoods, looking for rent signs. Everything was out of my price range. Then, someone at work told me about this program that could help me buy a house. I never considered that. I mean, my income was really pathetic back then. But I decided to look into it, and after a ton of paperwork and jumping through a lot of hoops, I got qualified to buy a low-cost house. I started looking at every house I could find in the Louisville area. I can't begin to describe the crap that I was seeing. These houses were at the very low end of the market. One of them was so trashed and actually had graffiti on the inside. I got discouraged, but one day I happened to drive by a house in the same neighborhood I was living in. It was actually a really cute house. It was an old Victorian. I got an appointment to see it, and I was surprised how much better it looked than all the others in that price range. I bid on it right away, and before I knew it, I was actually a homeowner. It happened so fast. I didn't really have time to check everything out thoroughly. We were moving in and the neighbors came outside and we introduced ourselves. They were two guys probably in their early 50s. They were roommates and seemed nice enough. One was Bud and the other one was Vern. They weren't very well groomed. Their clothes were old and ratty and their hair was uncombed and scraggly. Not to judge, but they didn't seem to be taking care of themselves at all. And they seemed to be unemployed. Every now and then they'd get their water shut off for non-payment they would request that I sling my garden hose over the fence to borrow some water. I always said yes. I kind of felt sorry for them and wondered about their situation. As time went on, we found out that they had a lot of animals living with them. Every so often, they'd bring one of their animals out to play on their lawn. There was such a variety. Hedgehogs, snakes, lizards, different rodents. I mean, a lot of animals. It seemed odd that they were feeding so many pets when they obviously had very little money. But some people really love animals. One night I was putting my kids to bed and I happened to look out the window and could see into their kitchen. These old houses were built really close together, like 18 inches apart. I didn't mean to spy, but I noticed their curtains moving in a strange way. I kept looking intently until I was horrified to realize that there were cockroaches. Hundreds of cockroaches were running up and down their curtains on their walls. I was beyond creeped out. That explained why sometimes I'd find a cockroach or two in my house. They were visitors from next door. That was so unacceptable to me. It was one of the few things I absolutely could not stand. I called a pest control company the next day. When they came out, I told them that what I had seen, and I said I wanted the perimeter of my house secured. They said it was doubtful that I'd be able to keep them away. If there were truly that many cockroaches, I assured them I wasn't exaggerating. They said I probably need to talk to the neighbors and get them to participate in some pest control also. It was agonizing for me, but that evening I forced myself to go next door and I knocked on their front door. No one answered. The front of the house looked dark, but I saw lights towards the back. Their house bordered the alley, so I walked down it to their back gate to check the backyard. I reached to knock on the gate, but when I touched it, it opened. I didn't see Bud or Vern. There was a low wattage light on their porch, and it was lighting up this huge animal cage about five feet tall. I was curious about it as I hadn't seen them bring out any animals very large before. Something big and hairless was in there. It was crouched with its back to me. When it heard the gate creak, it turned around and I immediately screamed. There's no way to describe this, but the best way to put it is that its face was a mix between a man and a dinosaur. Its yellow eyes looked right at me. It grabbed the bars of the cage with these big black claws. It looked at me hatefully and started to stand up. I swear it was at least as tall as the cage. I was terrified and slammed the gate and ran home. I was shaking like crazy. I couldn't believe it. Were those smaller animals food for that horrible thing? I ended up looking up the property records for that house. 
and found out Bud and Vern were renting it from an absentee owner. I reported the condition of the house to her and told her there was an extremely large and unusual thing living in the backyard. By the next month, they had been evicted, and there was no sign left of anyone. The house was gutted and remodeled. No one would ever know what it had been like before. Hello, Donovan. Thanks for the chance for me to tell your story on your channel. I'm not really new to the paranormal or cryptid community, but I wanted to add an experience of my own in case any listeners out there have had something similar happen to them. I've discussed this experience with a few close friends, and they all seemed surprised how direct it was. When it happened, I remember thinking it was odd. Usually when you hear ghost stories, they don't involve direct contact, but mine does. For some background, I've always had nightmares as a kid, and I still do. There's not really an explanation for it. When I was younger, I wasn't exactly watching The Exorcist or anything, so I'm really not sure why they cropped up. We lived in a normal house, a raised ranch that my parents had bought in the 80s and remodeled from a really trashy 60s setup. It was a comfortable place, roomy enough for my brother and I. I don't even remember feeling like anything paranormal was around. As I mentioned, nightmares were really common for me. They became so routine that I'd wake up almost the same time every night, just after midnight, and stay awake for a bit until my body calmed down enough to get back to sleep. When this happened, I was probably 11 or 12, so for years I'd been following the same routine. I woke up at the same time I always did, flicked on the lamp on my nightstand, and just kind of sat propped up for a bit. That night was a pretty rough nightmare, though. I think something about a person breaking into the house. Those are the worst for me, because they're so realistic. I also slept at the far end of the house on the second floor, away from any exits. So I think I was hyper aware of that, too. Even now, in my early 30s, I still check all the windows and door locks at night and basically have an escape plan. We had a family dog named Baxter that always slept in my room. It was summer and pretty hot, so he was sleeping on the hardwood floor because it was cooler. Baxter always made me feel better when I was freaked out because I knew he'd react if something was up. He was sleeping soundly even with the light on, so my racing heart calmed down a little. I tried to wait it out, but felt really on edge for some reason. I kept reminding myself that Baxter would freak out if something was wrong, but it wasn't helping. Like I said, I was 11 or 12 at the time, and I hate to admit this, but I was scared enough that I decided to go in my parents' room. I used to do this a lot when I was younger, a lot younger, and would just sleep in their bed or on the floor next to their bed in a pile of blankets. They weren't thrilled with it, but as I got older, I stopped doing it, so it wasn't an issue anymore. This night, I slowly got out of bed and kept trying to talk myself out of it. It was so embarrassing, but I just couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. I grabbed my comforter and quietly opened the door, turned on the hall light and hightailed it down the hallway to the room. My mom woke up a little when I knocked and explained that I couldn't sleep. She sighed but agreed that I could sleep on the floor. They had a pretty big room and an expanse of floor between the end of the bed and the far wall where they had a television. I hunkered down near the TV and got comfortable, my eyes adjusting to the dark as I did so. I had just started to drift off to sleep when I felt something move the blanket near my feet. Now this is a habit of mine. I have to sleep with my feet covered. I usually even roll them up in the blanket a little, like a sleeping bag. As I lay there, snapping awake again quickly, I felt the blanket get peeled off my feet and the air against them. Moving only my legs, I kicked the blanket around until my feet were covered up by it again and anchored the edge under my heels. I was practically holding my breath and had just started to calm down a little more when it happened again. Laying there in disbelief, I didn't move an inch as the blanket peeled slowly away from my feet. It was tugged from under my heels and I felt the air against my toes. Baxter, I thought. It had to be the dog. But I frantically remembered that he had stayed in my room asleep on the floor he hadn't followed me into my parents' room. I looked across the room at the door, silently praying that it was open and he had crept in. But it wasn't. As I did this, of course I had to look at my feet where the blanket had moved. There was nothing there. I took another quick glance around and there was nothing, or no one on the floor with me. I put my head back down and waited, almost scared to breathe. 
Minutes went by. Just when I was starting to get comfortable, it happened again, almost like a game. This went on for about a half an hour. I would adjust the blanket, acting as if nothing was wrong, and it would get moved again, sometimes almost up to my knees. I was freaking out at first, but then nothing else happened. I guess I just began to accept it. I have no idea what was messing with me that night, but eventually it stopped and I was so mentally and emotionally exhausted I passed out. No one else in my family ever mentioned an experience like this, and it never happened again. I'm guessing whatever it was wasn't malevolent, maybe just a passing spirit. So as a PSA, keep in mind that not every paranormal experience is malicious. I have a freaky experience that happened to me a little while ago. I'm an avid explorer and I love checking out abandoned buildings and stuff like that. I was never a believer in the paranormal, but now I just don't know. There is at least more out there than we care to admit. One day I was hiking and I saw a mouth of a cave. It looked awesome and I went inside to check things out. It was far too dark to go without a flashlight. So I figured I'd return the next day and check it out once I had a flashlight with me. The next day I was planning on making a day of exploring the cave. I packed myself a nice lunch, plenty of water, and a flashlight and headed back to the cave. When I arrived where I thought the cave was at, there was nothing there. I'm pretty good with directions and do this sort of thing all the time, but I must have gotten the location wrong. I spent hours retracing my steps and trying to find the cave again but it was nowhere to be found. Finally, it started getting dark and I was going to head back to my car, but I decided to do one more trip to find the location. When I got to the location I originally thought the cave was at, there it was again. I swear I visited that exact spot at least five times that day. There's a slight possibility I was mistaken, but I'm telling you, I retraced my steps and mapped out where I had walked and where I hadn't walked trying to find this damn cave. It was like it just appeared suddenly out of nowhere. I wasn't crazy about the idea of going into the cave then, for a couple of reasons. First, it was starting to get dark, so if bats chased me out of there or something, it would be more difficult to find my way out. Secondly, if I broke my ankle or something, nobody would be around to help. Also, the park was about to close, and it's technically illegal to be out there le- and it's technically illegal to be out there that late. I'll be honest though, the very last one rarely stopped me. I spent all day looking for that cave, and I didn't want to go home without achieving my goal. I turned on my flashlight and I went in there. It was pretty cool at first. It went way deeper into the earth than I figured it would, and there were all kinds of stalactites and stalagmites, and many natural beauties that no human hand had probably ever touched. I've been to caves before, but this thing was seriously gorgeous. I was surprised it wasn't more well known, and that the park didn't close it off to try to preserve it. It was worth the wait and spending the whole day trying to find it. You could hear some serious echoes reverberate all through the cave. Every step I took, you could hear an echo all around. It was pretty cool. I yelled a couple of times to hear how long it would take for it to return to complete silence. I eventually got to the point where I couldn't walk on the rock anymore. It dropped off into this huge room. It was much bigger than my flashlight would allow me to see, but what I could see was amazing, and I could tell by the sounds of the echoes that it was huge. I started heading back, and I noticed this part of the cave that I didn't see before. It was a small opening that I had to sort of crawl through. When I got to the other side, it opened up into a small room with a hole in it. When I flashed the light at the hole, I saw huge glowing orange eyes. I freaked out and froze. There was a small gray-skinned creature that had arms and legs similar to a human, but much more gangly and spindly. Its head was much bigger than its small, skinny body. We just looked at each other for a little while, and then it picked up a rock. I was terrified and crawled back through the opening as fast as I could. I got the hell out of that cave. Everybody I've told this to makes fun of me and says it's Gollum from Lord of the Rings but it absolutely terrified me. In hindsight, going spelunking in caves alone is probably not a good idea. I've read stories of bears living in caves, so I guess I should consider myself lucky for not being mauled to death. 
but I wasn't able to find anything about creatures matching that description that dwell in caves. That nasty thing's glowing orange eyes are still burned into my memory, and I don't know what to think about what it was about to do to me with that rock. I don't necessarily know if I believe in ghosts and stuff now, but I'm not arrogant enough to say outright that they don't exist. Nobody I've explained this story to has been able to give me a reasonable explanation for what I saw. Was it an alien? Was it some sort of demon? Did I discover some sort of new species? I just don't know what the hell I saw in that cave. Do you or any of your viewers have any idea what that could have been? Donovan, I'm telling you this because I'm scared. I know you can't really do anything for me, but sometimes it just helps to tell someone, you know. I work as a line operator in South Dakota. I live in Wall, which you might know if you've ever driven through the state and see all those Wall drug signs. I'm about to go looking for a job there, even though being a line operator pays better. Reason for that is, a couple weeks ago, a guy I work with named Tony just disappeared. He was working a line out in Quinn, edge of town there. No one knows what happened to him. They found all of his tools and some ripped up clothes, but that's it. He was just gone. Some people say it was because he just caught his wife cheating and he just run off. But then, why would he go to all that trouble to tear up his own clothes? And why would he leave his pickup parked next to that utility pole? I didn't believe it then, but I sure don't know. We got two things in South Dakota that shouldn't mix and that's chemical plants and reptiles. Snakes, lizards, frogs, turtles, salamanders. I don't know what all. I believe what got Tony was reptilian. I wouldn't believe it though if I hadn't seen it myself. When you're working on a line, they tell you not to look around. You gotta focus on the job for one thing. It's a dangerous job. Guys have been electrocuted. For one, you're up pretty high. We use safety gear, of course, but nothing's foolproof. Most of the time, I follow that rule. I get up there, do what I gotta do, and get back down. But one day, it was pretty hot, and the wind was blowing hard. People who haven't lived in the Great Plains don't really get what wind is like. Makes you feel like the world's trying to get rid of you. I heard the wind blowing something around, I thought. So I glanced down, and there was this ugliest creature that I've ever seen. At first, I thought it had to be a dude in a costume. Someone playing a prank, you know? That thing had a snake-like head and these yellow eyes. It stood up like a person, but instead of hands, it had claws. This thing was taller than a person, too. Like maybe eight or nine feet, and that's when it hit me. No way this was a guy in a costume. That's when I got scared. This line was along a rural road. I couldn't see anything around except for corn. The snake thing opened its mouth and showed me a bunch of its sharp teeth. Now, I know they're trying to say dinosaurs aren't reptiles, like they're really birds or something, but this thing looked prehistoric, like a dinosaur reptile thing. And it looked like it wanted to eat me, I was sure. It raised up its hand claw, and I nearly let go of the pole. If I had, the safety harness would have held me, but still. I had to fix that line, so I focused on it. I told myself that when I was done, it would be gone. It wasn't going to wait down there forever. I finished repairing that wire that had snapped off and looked down again. The dino thing was still there. It was broad daylight, and the thing was just standing there like it didn't care about anything. Like it owned the planes. I remembered Tony then, because that had happened a week before, and I had gone out there to where they found him. It wasn't this road, but it wasn't far. Maybe about a half mile down the road. By the time I got there, they had taken his clothes and stuff. I'd gotten close to the ground and looked around. There were dark drops in the dirt. Could have been blood, I wasn't sure. I also saw some tracks. I didn't think much of it at the time, but I was clinging to that pole, looking down at this dino thing. I knew it made those tracks. They looked like the tracks lizards make, five long toes with claws on the end. Creepy now that I knew what they were. It was hot, but I felt freezing cold. I didn't know what to do. Did I have to stay up there until this thing went away? I thought if a car went by, maybe it would just leave. But I'd worked on this line before and had been hours without seeing anyone pass by. There was a farmhouse off in the distance, way too far away. 
This dino thing bared its teeth at me again in a grin, and I swear there was blood in those teeth. Suddenly, I wondered if I was hallucinating. Maybe this thing wasn't even there at all. Maybe I was just imagining it. I closed my eyes and told myself when I opened them, it'd be gone. You know, like when you see water down the road, but it's just a mirage. It was still there when I opened them. Reptiles can stay still for a long time, like snakes. I seen them sitting on a rock for hours, just soaking up the sun. I couldn't outlast it. I came up with a plan. I'd call someone and then get them to come. Either this thing would leave or we'd fight it off together. There was only one person who would come out there for me, Carl. Carl had nothing better to do. He lived down at the trailer park and had no job most of the time. I got out my phone and tried not to sound scared spitless. Hey Carl, my truck died. Want to come out here and pick me up? I hated lying, but it didn't matter right now. I was up a creek, you know. Those ten minutes until he came seemed like forever. That dino thing didn't stop grinning, like it knew I couldn't stay up there forever. I heard the truck, tires on the pavement like the best thing you've ever heard in your life. I looked for it, strained my eyes down the road. When I looked back, that dino thing was gone. I climbed down the pole and I couldn't feel my legs. When I got to the ground, I fell to my butt. Carl must have thought I was nuts when he found me there in the grass, but he didn't say anything. I haven't seen that thing since, and I hope I never see it again. Let me know what you think about these stories in the comments below. Also, make sure to check out dreadsarmy.com, where you'll find all of my stories and multiple strange and weird news posted every single day. If you want to be part of the discussion, check out the forums on Dreads Army. We also have a Facebook group so you don't miss out on any updates. Thanks and take care.